Welcome to the book of Exodus, word Exodus, chapter 32, verse 14. Here's what it says. So the Lord changed his mind about the harm which he said he would do to his people. So yeah, you need some context on this one, don't you? So Moses was on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments. The people said, we don't know what's going on. Hey, let's have a golden calf. He'll lead us away. So they got Aaron. They talked him into it. It apparently wasn't that hard. Aaron makes the golden calf. They rise up and they're partying away. They're at the foot of Mount Sinai where they received the Ten Commandments. They agreed to keep the Ten Commandments, including number two, uh, no idol worship. So now they're worshiping an idol at the foot of the mountain. So God tells Moses, uh, the people have corrupted themselves. Uh, let me alone so that I can destroy them. Moses takes that as a cue to uh, pray for the people and intervene with God. He makes some arguments. Hey, God, don't destroy them because this, this, and this. We've talked about it previous days. And this is where we come to God's response. And of course, when God said, leave me alone so that I can destroy them, I'll make a great nation of you, Mr. M, big M, Moses. Uh, when Moses said, ah, no, no, keep, keep to the original plan, just have mercy on them. Uh, when that kind of happened, God, that was what God wanted. God wanted Moses to intercede for the people. And so here's the response, and the response is that God changed his mind. That's kind of an interesting business about God changing his mind. How does a perfect, all, all infinite being of complete benevolence, complete unselfishness, selflessness, how does that kind of a being change his mind? It's kind of interesting and worth thinking about. So when we realize that God invited Moses to intercede for the people, uh, that sort of is also a clue, a helper to us to understand that, that God uh, wanted Moses to intervene. He wanted Moses to plead for them unselfishly, and he didn't want really Moses to, uh, yeah, okay, sure, make, make a great nation starting with me. I'll be, I'll be Abraham number two. God didn't really want that, but he kind of put that out there. Moses passes the test and Moses intercedes with the people. So then God says, okay, I relented. It says he relented from what he was going to do. What about this unchanging God? Uh, what about that? Did the Lord change his mind? Well, we can look at other texts and where we continue, we'll be continuing through and see, did the Lord change his mind? Well, we can, we can realize that if Moses had not interceded, who would have? Yes, and perhaps the people would have been destroyed. So everything hung on one mediator, uh, Moses, who was in this case the mediator, but he's representing Jesus. Jesus, for all of, for you and I, everything hangs on our one mediator, and it, it's certainly not Moses. It's not uh, some megachurch pastor or big radio pastor. It's Jesus. Jesus is our one mediator. And so uh, God changed, did God change uh, what he would do? I think he was hoping Moses would go this way and he was glad to relent from the destruction he was indicating he would do. So notice that God interacts with humans and he changes his approach based on what the humans do. So he's immutable, that means unchanging, and yet uh, he will go in a different direction depending on the situation. So it's really quite fascinating and it reminds us of the, you know, you've heard it, this phrase, the power of prayer, uh, the pop, power of prayer. Uh, and we think, well, uh, that's, of course, praying, they want us to pray, but really it's all predetermined. God's gonna do it all his way, any which way. I wouldn't go that way. I believe there is power in prayer. I believe that God listens and he's looking for us. He's looking for us to echo the, his unselfish spirit in our prayer life uh, when we intercede for others. And so uh, we have God who's unchanging and yet his mercy is new every morning and he wants to do good. Someone has called this God's holy mutability, his willingness to change. And so it's just an interesting thing to think on. Now, if we go down a little bit further here, and we're coming to it at verses 33, 34, and 35, we're going to find that God says, you know, he who sinned against me, I am going to, you know, I'm going to address that. I will punish uh, when the day comes that I punish. So we'll, we'll get there, and we'll talk about it more at that point. But um, there are some, but God's giving a space for opportunity for repentance, and God has mercifully given you and I a space, an opportunity for repentance. So don't think that your prayers don't matter. Don't think that you how you relate to God doesn't matter. God is calling on us. He wants us to come toward him. He wants us, he, he, he invites us toward him. And in response to the prayer of Moses, he changed his direction. Israel continues to be God's people here, that those that are willing and on where we go. So we'll say more tomorrow morning. Thank you.